In 2017, Tesla made a major impact on our world, and you are a part of that. And today, I just wanted to run through some of the biggest changes that they've announced, some of the ways that they've impacted our world, and kind of what that means for us as consumers going into 2018. Let's dive in. Three, two, one. Oh, oh shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We went flat. We got big, big things. The Tesla semi-truck is something that I think we have to talk about here in this review because it has the potential to really disrupt an industry that burns a ton of diesel every year and can propel Tesla well above and beyond their current market cap and their current revenue and all those kind of things. Now, if you don't recall just some real high level bits about the Tesla semi, first is that on the high end, they have a 500 mile range. Along with that, they have these mega charger infrastructures that they announced to help charge in 30 minutes. And on the really pricing side, it's not bad. $180,000 on the high end, which is really comparable to what you get with a regular diesel cab. So the semi truck is a major thing that they announced this year that really has a potential for a large impact once they start actually producing them in 2019. At the same time when they unveiled the semi truck, they also announced the new next gen Roadster. And with the Roadster, the whole idea here was just to put a smack down on gasoline cars as Elon so eloquently put. And with it, there were some crazy specs that were announced. One is a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, double the size of a P100D or just a 100D Model S. And this also gives it a 620 mile range. Now, some of the other crazy stats were that it'll go zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds with a price tag of around $250,000 for the Founder Series, which may sound like a lot, but when you compare it to say a Porsche 918 Spyder or a Ferrari or a Bugatti, all the other cars kind of in this class, this is a steal. So the Roadster is here and is really a statement piece for Tesla, something that I hope to take ownership of one day and of course we'll share that journey with you guys. Now in addition to those two fantastic new things that Tesla announced just recently, the Model 3 is finally here. Well, maybe. Okay, so in July they had the Model 3 handover event where folks like myself got to go ride in one and they announced the details of them finally. If you don't recall, on the cheaper end you have the 35,000 version which goes 220 miles on a charge and on the higher end you have the $44,000 version which goes 310 miles, which is pretty incredible for the price per mile you get out of the Model 3. Plus it has a really new design, totally minimalistic, really designed for car sharing and fleet operations down the road, so really thinking far ahead here. And some people are getting their hands on them. Originally, it was just the owners, the SpaceX employees, and the Tesla employees, but individuals, general public, are also being invited, and there have been hundreds spotted at different delivery centers uh, in the United States and California specifically. So this means that the Model 3 is here. Now, it really isn't quite here for most of us, but in 2018, with the ramp that they're gonna have, hopefully reaching their goal of 5,000 Model 3s per week by the end of March, we're looking at a major impact to the EV market and for Tesla in the next few months. In addition to the new vehicles that Tesla announced, plus the Model 3 progress that's being made, there were some updates to the infrastructure too, and there were pretty significant. First, the supercharger network almost doubled in the number of stalls, and Tesla has kind of tripled down on this, that they're gonna to continue to grow this exponentially here in the coming years. In 2017, we saw it go from 5,000 stalls upwards of 8,000 stalls. So not quite double, but really approaching it, and there's still a few more weeks left in the year, so we'll see. And they also have these new cool urban chargers and these urban chargers are much more compact and so they can fit them in much more tighter spaces like in parking garages and put a lot more of them in. So I think the progress on the supercharger network, which is vital to the success of the Tesla Model 3 is really going well. And I'm, I'm pretty impressed with how well they've done. It just seems every other week we hear a story of a new supercharger station that has upwards of 40 or 50 stalls in it. So in terms of Tesla's mission to really switch us to a sustainable forms of transportation and energy, I think this is a really, really good story for them in 2017 was how much growth they actually were able to deliver. 
And speaking of deliveries, it looks like in 2017, Tesla is going to deliver upwards of 100,000 cars, probably more than that when it's all said and done, depending on how many Model 3s that they send out. And there's going to be a lot more in 2018 because the Model 3 delivery ramp is really going to start to pick up. And hopefully at some time in 2018, they'll hit that 5,000 cars per week. And so we're going to see just, just orders of magnitude more in 2018 versus what we saw in 2017. So 2018 is really poised as a major year for Tesla and for electric vehicles in general. And with that, a big success story, not necessarily directly Tesla related, but that is gonna help the EV industry in the United States is that the EV tax credit has survived both the different versions that came forth from the Congress to one of them was gonna kill it, the other one proposed to kill it, but didn't kill it, it's here. So in 2018, the tax credit will live, and that means that all the folks getting their Model 3s, or a big chunk of them, will be able to take advantage of that upwards. And I'm guessing around Q2 of 2018 is when we'll see it to really, really kind of phase out, or Tesla might hit that 200,000th car delivered, in which case the phase out begins. So everybody in 2018 will get some form of tax credit. Depending on when you get yours, it could be just half of it, or it could be the full amount. So stay tuned for more on that, and obviously we'll be tracking that here on the channel as time goes on. Now we couldn't really just talk about the cars with Tesla though because there's so much more than that now and one of the big stories this year was the battery that they put out in South Australia. Now this battery is the largest lithium ion battery in the world and they were able to install it in just under a hundred days. Now recently one of the really interesting things is that just this past week here <laughs> It actually took over for the coal-fired power plant that failed about 600 miles away. 600 miles away, the coal-fired power plant dies. Within 140 milliseconds, the backup energy from the new battery took over and were able to continue to deliver power to all the residents in the area. That's insane, and the people running it said that has to be a record. And so this speaks to the efficiency and effectiveness of grid-scale utility batteries. And so you're seeing a lot of this. Obviously, there are the stories about uh, the different islands that Tesla deployed these on, and as well as things like in Southern California where we have a lot of them coming in. But also, there's a much better story here, and that is about how quickly you can repair infrastructure as we saw Tesla do in Puerto Rico. So El Hospital del Nino in Puerto Rico came back online in really short order due to the efforts of Tesla. They installed about 700 solar panels, which gave 3,000 patients, 35 of which were critically ill, power to continue to get treatment and to hopefully recover and get better. So this is one of many projects to come in Puerto Rico, as Elon had tweeted out, and I think really speaks to the advancements in technology and how much better they are than trying to rebuild old dying infrastructure that really hasn't been advancing nearly at the pace of these newer energy vehicles have been. So lots of going on in the energy space, lots of power walls being delivered to people, you're seeing it all over YouTube. I still haven't got mine, still waiting on that, but guaranteed in 2018, I'll be talking more about the energy side because I think this is gonna become an even bigger picture of Tesla's future very soon. Now there's a lot of news out there about Tesla financials and what's going on there. So I think it makes sense to just cover this briefly so you get a sense of really what's going on. And I'm getting these figures from my friend Gally at HyperChange TV and I'll put a link to his channel down below because I think he really does a great job looking at the financial side of Tesla's world and what they're doing. So first and foremost, that in 2017, we're looking at around $11.5 billion in revenue, which is a steady growth rate. And in fact, if you compare that to where they were in 2010, it's about a 93% percent compound annual growth rate, which is pretty staggering and continues to grow, especially with things like the semi and the energy products and all that. There's a lot of promising things coming out in the future. Now, the revenue per share back in 2010 was only $1, and now it's upwards of $66, so a huge increase there. We're looking at about $2.2 billion in gross profit for Tesla in 2017, which is up 84%, the compound annual growth rate from back in 2010. And because of all the R&D and investments and things like the supercharger network and building out new factories and all these kind of things, they're looking at about a $1.6 billion operating loss. And let me just pause one second to talk about that. The name of the game, especially for a company like Tesla, who is still fledgling in comparison to other automakers and other energy companies, is growth. 
And the way you grow your company is you take whatever profit you're making on the products you're selling, all that money coming in, all the excess money you have, and putting it into things that are going to generate revenue in the future, such as a better supercharger network, such as new equipment for factories, such as new factories, other materials and things like that. So there is a lot of money being dumped into products that don't generate revenue now, but will in the future. And until Tesla really, really has has a substantial market share in here and is well beyond any point of failure, I think you're going to see them continue to operate at a loss, much like Amazon has done for about two decades now. So overall, 2017 was a great year for Tesla and for Teslanomics. I, I can't thank you enough for all your support throughout this year and helping grow this channel and this community, doing things like TeslaCon, which was a blast and we're definitely going to do again, uh, as well as helping other people take advantage of things like the discount on the referral program and really just learn a lot about what Tesla is doing to our economy and to our world. Now, you may have seen some videos recently that were a little bit different. They weren't directly Tesla related, but they were still in the same vein of understanding the economics behind tech products, which are changing our world. So stay tuned because I may throw those in from time to time as I get requests. And if you have a product or an area of the tech world that you're interested in and you want me to break down the economics of, hit me up on Twitter or just comment on this video. I'll be taking a look at those. And so I really just want to thank you guys for making 2017 a great year for me and the channel here. And I look forward to 2018. There's so much more to come. I'll be getting my model three we'll be sharing that experience with you uh, as well as things like the power walls and then all kinds of new events and i'm sure tesla is going to blow our mind even more so than they did in 2017. if you have any questions or anything feel free to leave them down in the comments i'll be hanging out for about an hour or so after this video post just to answer them and kind of chat with you guys so uh, thanks again and i will see you in the new year cheers